Japanese officials say they will work with counterparts in France to develop new technologies for reducing radioactive waste. They're hoping to find use for a troubled nuclear reactor in central Japan. The Monju reactor is used to recycle nuclear fuel. It's offline because of coolant leaks and other problems. Regulators have effectively banned the resumption of operations after learning that more than 10,000 safety checks were not carried out. Some lawmakers are calling for the reactor to be scrapped. But in a long-term national energy plan released last week, officials say the plant is an ongoing project. They may see a role for Manju by collaborating with researchers overseas. Engineers in France are developing a prototype reactor known as the Astrid. It's designed to reduce nuclear waste. Sources say the two sides may reach a basic agreement next month to jointly work on the project. Many in Japan will pause next Tuesday to mark the third anniversary of the earthquake and tsunami. The disaster and its lingering impact killed more than 18,000 people. More than 2,600 others are still considered missing. Survivors in the Northeast have found that a key to the recovery effort has been the kindness of strangers. More than one million volunteers from Japan and around the world have helped out in three prefectures. Residents of Minamisoma in Fukushima are among those who have benefited. Their city's southernmost border is less than 10 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Parts of Minamisoma remain inside the evacuation zone because of high radiation levels. But thousands of people still live in other areas of the city. Among them, an American volunteer has been there since 2011. NHK World's Miki Ebara has her story. Kate Oberg doesn't understand all the customs of this place, but she's trying hard to learn them. When she was 18, she spent three weeks in Minamisoma as an exchange student. And now she's putting down roots here. <laughs> Having you be like my Japanese grandma, the shop. <laughs> Oberg is from Pendleton, Oregon, a sister city to Minamisoma. Three years ago, Oberg was shocked to learn about what happened to her friends in Japan. It prompted her to organize a charity dinner. They raised thousands of dollars. Little by little, she learned more about the problems in Minamisoma. The tsunami killed more than 600 people in the city, and the nuclear accident forced many residents to flee. Nine months after the disaster, Oberg decided to pick up and head to Japan. I needed to do something. I just I couldn't sit there and not do something. Oberg joined other volunteers, cleaning debris, digging up gutters, and handing out food to people living in shelters. Seven, eight, nine, ten. She also volunteers teaching English to children. She's got used to the name they call her, Keito. Keito All foreign language teachers in Minamisoma fled the city right after the disaster. Many feared the effects of radiation. So when Oberg turned up, her Japanese colleagues were delighted. People were saying she moved here despite fears of radiation. Not just me, but everyone appreciated her coming here. Oberg admits that at first she too was nervous about radiation. She carried a device to monitor contamination. But she's confident about the information she sees about the levels in her neighborhood. And she says as long as she stays away from areas designated off limits, she feels safe. Oberg wants people to know that the media portrayal of Fukushima as a wasteland is wrong. So she shares stories and photos about her life online. And she hopes the locals get her message too.
I hope I'm able to give them hope that, you know, not everyone is afraid to come here. Oberg's efforts have brought her close to one local family. <laughs> Hatsuaki and Kuniko Izumi are farmers, but they can't work their land because it's inside the evacuation zone around Fukushima Daiichi. And they've been forced to live in a shelter. Still, the couple says Oberg has inspired them. You have a warm heart. Always a warm I saw her carrying heavy things to all the housing shelters where old men and women are living alone. Just watching her do that made me really happy. <laughs> Oberg says she feels like she has a lot of work left to do. You know, there's too much here that is not finished and I always you know have a home here and I always have people to see and people that love me as well and people that I love so much. Oberg has been with the people of Minamisoma through tears, smiles and laughter. She now calls the community her second home. Mikebara, NHK World, Minamisoma, Fukushima. Some are already looking ahead to the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. One of the people instrumental in bringing the Games back to Japan is a London-based consultant with a gold medal track record. And HKO's Hiro Morita spoke with him. Last September, members of the International Olympic Committee voted on which city would host the 2020 Summer Olympic Games. They chose Tokyo over Istanbul and Madrid. Observers say what century for Tokyo was its final presentation. Nick Barley, Tokyo's communications advisor, crafted the presentation. Last week, Hello. the London-based consultant visited Tokyo. His consulting firm focuses on sports. Varley played a key role in the previous Olympic campaigns of London and Rio de Janeiro, two cities that won their bids. Tokyo's success makes it three in a row for Varley's firm. He took the lead in preparing the city's final presentation by choosing seven speakers and crafting their speeches. What was your strategy? The strategy was very simple. We needed to win every presentation to show that Tokyo was the most effective and passionate team. Bali's aim was to spruce up Tokyo's reserved image. For example, he highlighted the city's enthusiasm for hosting the games by showing this footage. The people of Tokyo are giving a passionate welcome to Japan's medal-winning athletes from the 2012 London Olympic Games. The video helped erase the city's image as being cool toward the Olympics. Varley also wanted to change the general perception that the Japanese are too formal. Traditionally in Japan, male executives lead off presentations. But for the Olympic presentation, Varley picked Paralympic athlete Mami Sato as the first speaker. I'm here because I was saved by spot. Sato is from the Tohoku region. He was hard hit by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. During her speech, she said many athletes visited devastated areas and helped organize sports events. She said this energized people so they could get back on their feet. Bali counted on Sato's speech to send a strong message to the Olympic Committee that the Games would help rebuild the lives of people in the devastated areas. We used Mami Sato's personal story about her own personal uh, experience. It became suddenly a very powerful, happy story. You know, she found her family, 
she's been back to the area and is helping use sport to rebuild lives. What was the biggest challenge for you to make those Japanese uh, presenters look good and sound good? The, the biggest challenge, and, and they will all laugh when they hear me say this, was to make them smile. So it's really important to, to you know, move away from perhaps that overly serious Japanese style of presenting and look like you're enjoying yourself. Tokyo! Yeah! Marley's strategy paid off. Tokyo won the bid. Japanese everywhere were ecstatic. What do you think exactly Tokyo needs to do from now to uh, 2020, that's six and a half years? I think um, one of the mistakes that winning bids sometimes make is they forget what made them win in the first place. So the reasons Tokyo won is because of a fantastic leadership team who embraced a global approach and took a very strong campaign and communication uh, strategy to, to make, make it all work. And I think it's very important for, for that mentality to continue. The people of Tokyo are determined to match Londoners and the people of Rio in giving the world Olympic Games to remember. Hiro Morita, NHK World. Meanwhile, an NHK survey shows that more than half of evacuees affected by the March 2011 disaster are feeling unsure about the choice of location for their new residence. NHK conducted the survey in January among over 2,800 evacuees from Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima prefectures and received more than 1,200 answers. 86% of respondents said they had decided where to move. 71% said they will go back to exactly where they lived before or to other areas in their former communities. 15% answered that they will move to other municipalities. 45% of respondents said they have no doubts about their decision, but more than half said they often or sometimes wonder whether their choice of location was right. Those who are feeling undecided were asked about what they missed most. Over a third said land, houses, and family graves. Others mentioned bonds with neighbors and friends. An expert says the survey shows even after three years, the evacuees have limited options for rebuilding their lives, and both central and local governments should further explain their reconstruction plans to reassure. The turmoil in Ukraine is obstructing a Japanese aid group. The NPO supports people affected by the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear accident. Volunteers in central Japan have been sending medical equipment and funds to the region for 24 years. They've also been helping to grow rapeseed plants. The roots of the plant are thought to absorb radioactive substances from the soil. The seeds are used to produce biofuel. However, recipients of the aid have asked the Japanese to stop sending money. Members of the Ukrainian civic group say they are unable to work because their office has been seized. A senior member of the NPO, Masaharu Kawata, is worried the group may not be able to continue its activities. The confusion is badly affecting Ukrainian people still suffering from the nuclear accident. We fear they may not be able to enjoy the support they are entitled to by law. It will soon be three years since the nuclear accident in Fukushima. Its impact is not limited to Japan. A U.S. firm producing enriched uranium has filed for bankruptcy. The firm Uzek, based in the state of Maryland, makes the nuclear fuel for power plants. The company filed for protection from creditors under Chapter 11. Uzek executives say financial difficulties resulted from a plunge in the price of enriched uranium. An oversupply of the fuel was the main cause. Many nuclear plants in Japan and Germany were taken offline after the 2011 accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Japan's Toshiba has invested more than $37 million in Uzek. It was part of a project to build a comprehensive system for the nuclear power business. That means from supplying the fuel to the construction of power plants.